everyone, this is Jay. I'm back with another Sunday upload. As you guys know, on Sundays it's Unsolved Sundays on my channel and I discuss some sort of mystery case, unsolved disappearance, murder, something along those lines. And then on Wednesday I also upload some sort of beauty, fashion, lifestyle video. I also upload twice a week over on my second channel, so definitely go check that out too. So today's case we're going to be talking about is the really bizarre death of Roland T. Owen. So Roland T. Owen's case begins on January 2nd, 1935, when a man checked into Hotel President in Kansas City, Missouri. He was assigned to the room 1046 and he used the name Roland T. Owen. The bellboy who assisted him to his room said that he had carried no luggage apart from when he got into the room he pulled out a comb, a brush and toothpaste out of his pocket. So on this day that Roland T. Owen checked in, a maid came in to clean the room and she found him sitting with uh, very little light um, so he'd drawn the shades, he was just sat under a small lamp and he was just sat there in darkness. He told her to leave the door unlocked and um, said this was because he was expecting a friend but while she was cleaning he left before she had finished. She pointed out that he seemed particularly nervous and um, he seemed quite uneasy. The same maid then returned a few hours later to replace the towels and she said that when she was in the room she found him lying fully clothed on the bed. And she said that when she left the room, she noticed a note that was just on the table and it read, Don, I will be back in 15 minutes, wait. At 10am the next day, which is January 3rd, she returned again to clean the room. She said that she found the door locked from the outside, so because of this she assumed that he had gone out and locked the door behind him. So she let herself in with her pass key. And to her surprise, when she got in the room, she found him sitting alone in the dark. So just after she entered the room, she heard the phone rang and Roland picked up and she heard him say, No, Don, I don't want to eat. I'm not hungry. I just had breakfast. Later that day, the same maid came back again to change the towels, only to hear two male voices inside the room talk. When she knocked, she heard a rough voice and this unknown and unrecognised voice told her that they didn't need any towels. So that is pretty much the only known information about what he did that day. Anything sort of before and after this isn't quite it isn't guaranteed. A man named Robert Lane said that he picked up a stranger just a few miles um, away from Hotel President. It was sort of later that night after the maid had given her account. So Robert Lane said that the man he picked up wore only an undershirt and pants despite it being a particularly cold night. And he also said that he noticed the man had a deep scratch in his left arm. So this unknown man had flagged down Robert in his car and asked him to take him somewhere that he can catch a cab. Some sources say that uh, Owen accidentally mistook him for a cab but um, a lot of places say that he asked to be taken to a place where he could catch a cab. Robert Lane, the man driving, said that he looked as though he'd had a bad night and when he said this to the man, the man replied, I'll kill that bad word tomorrow. Robert Lane then later identified this man as being Roland T. Owen. The next morning on January 4th at 7am, the phone operator at the hotel noticed that the phone in room 1046 was off the hook, so um, a bellboy named Randolph Propst, who was the same bellboy who let Roland T. Owen into his room when he first checked in, he was sent up to room 1046 to ask him to, like, you know, hang up the phone, put it back on the hook. When Randolph got to the room, he saw that the door was locked and that there was a do not disturb sign on the door handle. So because of this, he knocked and was told to come in, but the door had been locked. So he knocked again and was told the same, but then he, when he continued to knock, he was told to come in, but turn on the light. So Randolph assumed that he was drunk, so he knocked a few more times and then shouted through the door, telling him to hang up the phone, make sure it's back on the hook. However, the phone remained off the hook and nothing changed. Later, another bellboy was sent up to, again, ask him to um, put the phone back on the hook and he let himself in with a room key this time. This bellboy found Owen lying on the bed in the dark. He was completely naked and he appeared intoxicated. He noticed that the phone stand had been knocked over, so he just pretty much without saying a word, he fixed the phone, put it back uh, where it should be and then just left the room. A few hours later the operator then noticed that the phone was off the hook once again so sent up the bellboy. This time the first bellboy, Randolph Props, was sent back up to once again ask him about the phone. He entered the room again with a pass key. When he let himself in the room he found Owen lying on the floor naked and covered in blood. 
He turned on the lights and he found that there was blood spatter all over the bed, the walls, the bathroom, everywhere. So obviously the police were immediately notified and when the police arrived they concluded that Owen had been tied up and tortured for like hours and he'd somehow managed to survive this. He'd been stabbed multiple times and repeated blows to the head meant that he had a fractured skull but like I said he somehow survived this assault. So because he was in such an unstable um, condition the police tried to question him. All the information that he would give them was that he had fallen against the bathtub. Then later that night he fell into a coma and died. But obviously because Roland wasn't in the um, best condition to tell them any information and then he unfortunately died they didn't really have a lot to go on so investigators then looked at 10 room 1046 for any sort of evidence as to who had assaulted him so badly that he died when they searched it they found a number of things they found the label from a necktie an unsmoked cigarette a woman's hairpin a safety pin and a small bottle of sulfuric acid they also found two drinking glasses and one had four fingerprints which they believed to be that of a woman. When they looked into Roland T. Owen a little further they found that there was no there was no trace of a man named Roland T. Owen that matched his description so he was then labelled as a John Doe. Because he was a John Doe the body was displayed publicly in a local funeral home in hopes that someone would come and recognise him and be able to put a name to the face. A number of people came forward and said that they'd, they recognised him under different names in different areas of the city which is very very it's very unusual. And then one day the funeral home received an anonymous call asking for them to hold his body there until the funds could be gathered to hold a proper funeral for him. The money eventually arrived anonymously and the man was buried under the name Roland T. Owen and the person who made the anonymous phone call claimed that this was his actual name. The money also arrived anonymously at a local florist for a bouquet of roses to be laid on the grave and the card on the flowers read Love Forever Louise. So a year later in 1936, a woman from Alabama read the story of part of the case in a newspaper and she said that she believed that the dead man may be her friend's missing son. So this missing son, his name was Artemis Ogletree, I think that's how you pronounce it, and he'd left his home in April 1934. And then his mother positively confirmed the body to be that of her son. So then the body of the man who was buried as Roland T. Owen was believed to be that of Artemis Ogletree. Around 70 years later, in the early 2000s, a Dr. John Horner, who was a, lab a librarian in the Kansas City Public Library, said he received an anonymous phone call while at work. The caller said that he'd been itemising um, the belongings of a elderly person who just passed away, and while he was doing so, going through their belongings, he found a box of newspaper articles. These clippings have been about the murder of Artemis Ogletree or Roland T. Owen, as well as an object that had been mentioned in one of the articles, and the caller didn't specify what um, was in the box, what particularly uh, the item was, and who the elderly person, the deceased person was, so there was no idea of finding, there was no way of finding who this was. So many people speculate that um, it is likely that Artemis or Roland died as a result of like a deadly love triangle. There are so many questions. Who is Don, the person who was expected to be in the hotel room with him? Who is Louise, the one who left the flowers on the grave and what was in this box what was the mysterious item that was found with these newspaper clipping clippings that this person allegedly have had and also who is this elderly person that is said to have some sort of link and this is where the case of Roland T. Owen ends. So that is everything I have to discuss it is very very strange like I said it was a very very bizarre case and there are a lot of unanswered questions not many theories because a lot of people just say that there aren't really any answers to these questions no one really knows anything about anyone really related to this case so yes that is the video i hope you found it interesting and also let me know down below any specific cases you want me to do in future unsolved sunday videos thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these type of videos and i'll see you guys on wednesday for another video bye